welcome everybody to One Million Cups Rochester. Uh, my name is Jamie Sunsbach. I'm one of the co-organizers with One Million Cups Rochester. Uh, thank you all for joining us today in this virtual world we now find ourselves in. Uh, we did one of these in April as a test and it went very well. So uh, we're happy to continue doing One Million Cups uh, here um, going forward. So um, a couple of uh, ground rules and things like that. So out of courtesy to our speakers today, uh, if you're not the speaker currently speaking, please mute yourself. There will be an opportunity to unmute uh, during the Q&A to ask questions of our presenters. Um, you can find that at by using the chat button located on the bottom. We would prefer that you submit questions and then I'll call on you during the Q&A and then you can unmute yourself and ask the question. I'm a big fan of not uh, relaying your questions to people, but at the same time, we want to find a way uh, to all mute ourselves so that our presenters can focus on uh, really doing a, a fantastic job in their presentations. So the first thing I'm going to do, if I can find my mouse, which seems to be missing right now, well, maybe we'll do that later, is uh, we were going to launch a poll. I will do that a little bit later. So you'll see a poll pop up. It'll have two questions on it. If you could just answer those questions really fast, that would be fantastic. We use that data to report back to the Kauffman Foundation, which is the organization that really is responsible for uh, disseminating 1 million cups across the US. And that kind of gives uh, Kauffman some valuable data that they can use to uh, continue to bring 1 million cups to over 160 communities in the United States. Um, so what is A Million Cups? Uh, for those first timers, A Million Cups is a free program designed to educate, engage, and inspire entrepreneurs around the country, and most importantly, here in our own community. Each time we gather, we feature two great entrepreneurs from around the region that share their story with us. And the real power of A Million Cups, I believe, is that we ask our entrepreneurs, how can we as an entrepreneurial ecosystem help you move your business forward. Uh, so for all of our attendees today, it's really your job to listen to what our two fantastic presenters are asking and really try to think of ways that you can help them uh, move forward with their businesses. So One Million Cups couldn't be uh, run here in Rochester without uh, the Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation, which as I mentioned before, is the organization that really spearheaded One Million Cups and the drive to plant some great uh, 1 million cups in, like I said, over 160 communities across the nation. But we also have fantastic local sponsors. Uh, so we have uh, Collider Foundation, the Music Camp Group, Ready, uh, Destination Medical Center, The Bee Shed, Dunkin' Donuts. Again, I wish I had one now, but uh, maybe the next time when we can gather, we'll definitely enjoy some tasty donuts. Um, Trail Creek Coffee Roasters, Cafe Steam, and of course, CETA, who have been fantastic partners over the last few years that we've been able to do One Million Cups here in Rochester. So a couple of announcements on my end, and then I'm going to open the floor to announcements from the group. Um, if you haven't seen it already, uh, a, a group of uh, people from Collider and Nate Nordstrom from Brandhoot, as well as the Chamber uh, the RDA and uh, who, who am I missing? Ready, uh, sort of banded together to create this app called Roch Strong. And really the intent of the app is to ask businesses how you want the community to support you. So if you're a business and you're looking for a way to get uh, noticed and, get, and, and really for your customers to find out the best way to support you, uh, feel free to fill out an application. And it's a web-based app, it's really simple. Uh, to access and we'll get that up there as fast as we can. The second thing is uh, the Collider Foundation has a, a, a micro grant program called United We Stand. Uh, these micro grants are up to $500 that can be given out to any brick and mortar business and it's funded through the sale of uh, t-shirts as well as donations uh, to our page which you can see the URL uh, right here. Uh, though it was really spearheaded by uh, David Van Isle from Textile, and he came up with this idea of making these shirts and selling them, and you see them at Hy-Vee. I, I know Silver Lake uh, Groceries has it now. 
Um, there, and there's a few other places, but basically you buy the shirt, all the proceeds from that go to helping a local entrepreneur, like I said, with a micro grant of about $500. So that helps in this time when people are waiting from funding from the government and everything else to really bridge that gap, maybe on a rent payment or some utilities. And it's something that we're happy to be able to uh, to give out in the community. So it's a very simple application and we put you in a queue, but really the caveat is the funding will continue as long as people continue to buy the t-shirts and support uh, through our donation uh, fund, which you can see at, uh, at collider.mn slash UWS. So continue to support local, continue to support the micro grants and we'll continue to give them out. Um, the third thing we have is tomorrow night is the E1 Cup. So this is out of Red Wing Ignite. It's their traditional yearly pitch competition. Uh, it's been rebranded this year, E1. E1 is a network of entrepreneurs from our entrepreneur support organizations across uh, 14 different partners here in Southeastern Minnesota that have gotten together to really uh, combine forces to help entrepreneurs succeed. So E1 stands for Entrepreneurs First. And our own Chris Lukenbill, round of applause for Chris, virtual applause. Uh, Chris Lukenbill and Sherpa is our, one of the uh, contestants in the pitch competition. The winner uh, proceeds to the uh, second round of the Minnesota Cup. So it's a very, very prestigious thing. And we know Chris is going to win. So uh, <laughs> at least we're hoping. Um, as well as there's another Rochester company, uh, Konomics, which is also participating. So we wish both of our Rochester companies well. If you want to view it tomorrow night, it's from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, you can sign up there at the link. And with that, oh, we have one more thing. So um, the E1 group is also organizing a series of what we call Tech Talks with uh, various uh, really uh, celebrities, if you will, of, of the tech community here in Rochester. And our next one will be at the last Thursday of this month uh, from 2 to 3 p.m. with Brett Boll, who's the managing director of Techstars uh, Farm to Fork Accelerator, as well as the managing director of the Syndicate Fund. So if you want to hear a great story about uh, an entrepreneur, about the sort of accelerator program that a tech stars can bring to a community, as well as if you want to learn more about someone who's actively investing in companies, this would be a great talk to attend. So with that, I want uh, Stefan to jump in and tell us a little bit about Walleye Tank. I'm paying attention. I'm paying attention, I promise. Of course you um, <laughs> the, uh, My name is Stefan Medansing. I'm with Mayo Clinic's Office of Entrepreneurship. The Walleye Tank, uh, as a 10 second introduction is Minnesota's only life sciences pitch competition this year, of course, the opportunity to do pitch competitions in person is, is no longer uh, available. So we've decided to pivot our competition and turn it into something that's a little bit more akin to a showcase where our goal is really to provide a platform to tell stories about how people all over Minnesota, uh, whether they be small businesses, communities, nonprofits, anybody and everybody picking up the mantle to take take charge and overcome the COVID-19 related challenges that we're all facing, specifically in the domains of diagnostics, treatment, or management of the disease. So we're going to have a handful of speakers over the span of two hours on Friday, November, Friday, May 15th, between 3 and 5 p.m., if you have any questions or you'd like to register to attend, we'll be live streaming through YouTube for all participants, all public participants. Um, and you can find more information on our website, www.walleitank.com. If you're interested in participating as a presenter, we are still taking applications until the end of the day. Uh, and we're looking to fill three to five minute slots where you talk about what it is that you're doing, how your companies have to manage these challenges, pivots that you've made using technology or, or whole new market segments that you're helping to address now in, in these unprecedented times. See you next week. Great, thank you. Uh, anybody else have any announcements before we welcome our presenters for this week? Oh, Chris has, Chris is either waving or he has an announcement or both. 
uh, both actually. Hi everybody, good to see you all. Great turnout today. Um, just a quick word, the Assistive Tech Challenge for those of you have heard of it. Uh, we will continue with that. For those who haven't heard about it, it is a business pitch competition around developing assistive technologies for people with disabilities. And uh, that event was supposed to be in early April. And obviously we weren't able to hold that as a live event. We've been staying in touch with the teams and our judges and we're pivoting to do that as an online uh, digital webinar competition. Uh, it will be the first week of June. We're nailing down the date. It'll be either the second or third of June. So. Uh, we would love to have all of you and all of your friends and all of your friends' friends show up and participate in that digitally next month. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Um, all right, last chance for announcements. Hearing none, I want to say hi to Ben, from who is our regional uh, regional liaison for One Million Cups, who has apparently jumped in and. Uh, that's awesome. So Ben, could you uh, just jump in and say hi and introduce yourself and uh, maybe talk just for a, briefly for a second or two about A Million Cups and what you do. Hey, thanks, Jamie. It's great to be here. Cheers, everyone. Dink. Good morning. Uh, happy 1MC Wednesday. Uh, this is uh, the silver linings of our virtual environment is that you can teleport uh, into different communities and uh, enjoy some caffeinated conversations with uh, different folks who are passionately building things that matter. It's uh, this morning I've uh, visited Kalamazoo uh, and spent an hour with them over in the Eastern time zone. Uh, just uh, joined Des Moines and Peoria before making my way here to Rochester. Um, and so uh, for those of you who are aware of One Million Cups in Rochester, I uh, love the new venue, uh, lots of natural light there. Uh, this is still pretty good light, I suppose, in the virtual world. Uh, but what a neat way to uh, stay connected. I think uh, entrepreneurship is a lonely roller coaster. And so uh, tapping into the community aspect is an important piece of a lot of people's puzzle. Uh, and so uh, knowing that 1MC in Rochester is naturally the finest of all communities, uh, there are others uh, who are doing the same type of thing throughout Minnesota and throughout our 12 state Midwest region. Uh, for those of you who might not be aware that One Million Cups is a nationwide movement fueled by the Kauffman Foundation, there are about 168 different communities nationwide. Uh, we have about 55 uh, throughout our 12 states and Min uh, Minnesota has like seven, so quite a few there. And I think the uh, invitation for entrepreneurs, um, whether it's to participate uh, and get, kind of energize yourself uh, uh, on a weekly basis, or even taking that opportunity to present what you're building and learn from the perspective of others. Uh, now is an easy time, zero dollars to travel and present uh, in different communities. And so 1millioncups.com is an easy way to use an application that you may have used to present uh, in Rochester and with two or three clicks, activating that into other communities. And so uh, Jamie, if you have entrepreneurs who are interested in uh, the Passport program, uh, I know you can connect them into the right direction, but let me know if there's any introductions to or fellow organizers in different communities uh, and, and this opportunity, I suppose, of, of learning from the perspectives of even more uh, entrepreneurial ecosystems and the 1MC communities that bring it all together. Uh, so cheers what's happening. Uh, in your uh, Rochester community and, and to what is being built. I am curious, uh, are there other organizers besides Jamie in the house? Yeah, I think uh, we have Amanda and I'm scanning down the lines, uh, Stefan and Marty, uh, Chris Lukenbill. Very nice. Uh, Chris Gassner, he's driving. So yeah, we have we have a we have a good a good group here. Of I ask because I like to give a special moment to cheers the volunteer nature of that position. These are the folks who care about uh, educating, accelerating, and connecting your entrepreneurial ecosystem. And so uh, I would like to share a special thank you to the, the organizers and for those of you who might be new to One MC. Uh, the hashtag is One MC. I know you guys get loud on the Twitter and social media landscapes, so have fun sharing with that. And uh, I want to share my true gratitude and appreciation for all the work uh, our 1MC organizers are doing. So I'll give you a virtual round of applause and then uh, kick it back to you, Jamie. Thanks for the chance to say hello. Yeah, not, not a problem. Thanks for joining us, Ben. 
Uh, so I know our presenters are like, he said he was going to go 10 minutes and it turned into 15. So I apologize for that. So we're going to practice something. So what we do normally live at a million cups is we do standing ovations before every, every presenter, you know, to get, to build that energy, to build that confidence, to get you up there and get you, you pumped. Well, I don't want anybody in this room to do a standing ovation right now. I think that would be very uncomfortable and odd. So um, we're going to practice doing uh, silent clapping. So, you know, trying to get your hands actually in the frame and let's, let's, uh, let's silently clap. And those of you that can, you know, I want to see you on the video. I want to see you, um, you know, welcoming our first presenter, uh, which is Allison from Roasted Bliss. Take it away, Allison. Hi guys, how are you? Hope everyone's well. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Hopefully it'll kick in. There's kind of a leg. Um, I'm Allie Johnson from Roasted Bliss. I am one of the co-owners. Uh, my business partner is Denise and she's actually at the shop manning it right now. Um, we kicked this off about, it's been about a year now. Um, we had this idea that we wanted, I wanted to leave Mayo Clinic, she wanted to leave hy V. She is the baker, um, I am the business front. And she was really nervous about having an actual shop. And I'm all about, you know, you only have one life to live. So my goal was to put an offer in on a building, which we did, um, it ended up working out. And we, I remember going through uh, our woods here at my house, just trying to think of names. And I think that was the hardest part. It wasn't necessarily opening up the shop. It was trying to find a name and a slogan that would work for us. And we came up with Roasted Bliss. Um, roasted kind of being the coffee portion of it. You roast the beans and bliss um, is for our baked goods. You know, it's always delicious. And we wanted something that would kind of go together and, and have a nice ring to it. And we opened up December 7th of this last year. And I actually had major hip surgery and femur surgery in November. So we opened and I happened to be in a wheelchair um, and it was just kind of hit the ground running. We kind of thought we had an idea of what we were doing and we really didn't. It was just kind of learn as you go. And each day our customers presented new challenges, but we welcomed those and we were open for a few months and then COVID hit. With that being said, I'll go to the next slide. Um, I love QuickBooks and I happened to be on QuickBooks about a month and a half ago and a little message popped up and it said, hey, you can create a GoFundMe for your business. And I wasn't sure how we could pair that initially because I didn't want to just have a GoFundMe to support Roasted Bliss. And I knew Denise and I really wanted to support the frontline workers and everyone that has to work. Um, but we didn't have the financial means to give away baked goods to everyone. So I was actually talking with Joya and from CETA and said, hey, you know what? I'm, I just started this GoFundMe. I'd like to somehow get the word out that we could take in donations. And because we're a licensed facility, we could bake a ton of cookies and cupcakes and sweets and then donate them to UPS, FedEx, Mayo Clinic, OMC, um, as many people as we could touch. And she said, hey, let me do a press release for you. Well, she did a press release and then Chris Gassner sent that out and it took off from there. Our goal was $3,000 um, and each week we were just amazed at the number of checks that came in our mail or people would stop in and give us cash or they would also donate to the GoFundMe. Um, right now, we are just under $300 away from the $3,000 goal that we set. Um, we've delivered, I don't even know how many cookies, it's been a couple of thousand cookies to the COVID testing sites, to Mayo NICU, um, OMC here in St. Charles, just a variety of individuals. And our intention was never to say, hey, you know, we want PR from this, but to help others. And it has actually gotten our name out there. We've we put our logo on each one of the individually wrapped cookies and we've started getting a ton of orders for those cookies, those pastries. 
But more importantly, it's been so amazing to see the pictures come in and the thank you cards come in from all the people that we touched. And I mean, you wouldn't think a cookie would make that big of a difference, but when they're spending 12, 13 hour days on their feet and it's just kind of the same old routine, when others go out of their way to think of them, we can tell that it's really made a difference. So it's been cool to see the community come together when, you know, this isn't necessarily a fun time for everyone. From that, um, we also knew that we needed to change um, where we were going with things. Even though we are a coffee shop as well as a bakery, our bakery sales were way up, but our coffee was not. And so we started with a donut recipe and we're like, hey, you know, we'll give this a stab. Um, not something we ever thought that we would do. And we do a, a brioche donut. It's not your cake donuts, but um, a really nice vanilla bean brioche donut. And we did it one day and that took off. And the next week it was double sales for us. And this coming Saturday will be our seventh Saturday that we've done donuts now. And our previous Saturday, we had 228 pre-ordered donuts. And that was just pre-ordered. Um, we had another little over 200 donuts that we made and we sold out. So we've really had to shift our business model and what we thought we would be baking to meet the needs of customers in the community as well as Rochester. It, with that, we also opened up delivery. So we come to Rochester um, the first and the third Saturday in, of the month, but we also do specialized items too and we'll just throw something on our Facebook page that we'll be in Rochester doing a delivery. Um, we found that that's increased our sales and we're also able to get when people do a delivery to rochester a lot of them are ordering coffee drinks too so that's helped boost our coffee sales uh one of the last things that we did is last night i threw out a post because denise and i are, are all about helping the community as much as possible in this uh trying time and we learned of a farmer who lives in lewiston and has a couple thousand pigs that will have to be put down and I wasn't sure how well it would be received, but I threw a post out there um, saying, hey, if anyone would like to purchase a pig, um, this would benefit a farmer, let's all come together. And that post has now had over 1,100 shares. So indirectly, we helped him, but indirectly, we also helped ourselves to get our name out there a little bit as well. So it's been cool to have our own platform to kind of do what we would like to do to reach the community and give back as much as possible. Um, we have found that it's, it's been a little bit challenging to learn our industry because as some of you may know in the restaurant industry, times change and seasons change. And so we really don't know what our norm is yet. And I think it will be a couple of years until we know what that norm would look like. Our December, we know we'll be super busy with Christmas items. January is usually a slow month. Um, we had no idea that when COVID hit, that it would actually be a blessing to our business. And we want to make sure that we're able to assist people in whatever way they want to get their bank cut. So with the deliveries, the curbside pickup, uh, people want to come in, whatever way we can get them the items that they would like um, so that they are not um, having that fear of maybe getting something. Um, yeah, we just want to make sure that we meet everyone's needs. And then ways that you can kind of help Roasted Bliss. Um, we do still have our GoFundMe page up. And so that's um, www.gofundme.com slash Roasted Bliss. Or um, until 10 o'clock today, we have our online ordering open. So you can order donuts for the Saturday. We have our French dill pie. Um, we have our key lime pie and a peach pie for Mother's Day. And then I also put an Oreo cheesecake on there. So if you're interested in ordering anything, we'd love to uh, help you out. And those do shut down at 10. But I guess that's all that I have. And thank you again for having me. Great. Thank you so much. Virtual <laughs> round of applause. I'm trying to be very quiet because you would actually hear my applause. Um, questions. I didn't. Oh, I, uh, Ken has a question. Uh, yeah, you said you you know when you started you bought or put money down on a building and such. Uh, how did you do the initial financing? 
Um, we actually went through uh, one of the local banks in St. Charles through Bremer, and then we um, supplemented that with a seed loan. Uh, Chris has a question. Luke and Bill, sorry. All right. Yeah, I was just curious to know, um, you mentioned that you're in St. Charles there, and, uh, and I was curious to know how you picked St. Charles, and maybe now that you're there, and things are a little bit trying, how has that community come together to help support you um, as being part of a small community? Yeah, um, well, we picked St. Charles. Ironically, Denise moved kind of by Elba. I don't know if you guys are familiar with like the Whitewater area, but her and her husband had moved to St. Charles about 10 years ago. And I'm an avid hunter and I love to fish. And so I moved to St. Charles about uh, six years ago. And my husband and I built a house here. And so our business is actually right in the middle and we didn't want to drive to Winona or to Rochester every day. And we knew that starting out a business in a bigger community would cost us a lot more and we were already taking enough of a risk and so st charles just happened to have a building that had been on the market for two years and we were actually able to there's an apartment above we were able to get a tenant to help um support some of the costs as well so yeah that's we we picked st charles it's just it's been a great community and I would say, especially with the help of CETA, you know, they've posted about our business and stuff. Um, they've been able to assist with getting the community to gather to kind of support us. But also this morning, um, I contacted all of the small businesses in St. Charles and said, hey, if you're willing to offer a $20 gift card for $15, let's bundle it, let's get the word out and really help all of the small businesses in St. Charles thrive during this time and offer cost savings to community members too. So currently working on that. And it's so cool to see all the business owners coming together as well. Great. Uh, Chris Gassner, who apparently is hopefully not still driving. Uh, <laughs> feel free to ask a question. Not still driving, safely at my office now. Uh, good morning, Allie. You're a rock star. Hey, Charles. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for joining us this morning. My question or my point that I wanted you to bring up a little bit is you've also started partnering with uh, at least one other small business um, to kind of um, work together on, on growing both of yours. Could you talk a little bit about that partnership and, and do you see yourself doing more of that looking for other small businesses to work with your business? Yeah, so some of you guys may know uh, Chris Bill with Trail Creek Coffee and Jim as well. Um, I noticed one day that it was probably about two months ago, I think, Chris, you can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that there was a marketing meeting at Trail Creek and unfortunately we had an employee call in and I couldn't make that meeting, but I connected with Crystal at Trail Creek and said, hey, you know, can we get some samples from you and would like to know more about your business. And from there, a friendship developed, but also a business relationship and um, Crystal and Jim are roasters in Casson, Minnesota, and we definitely want to support um, local businesses and we love their coffee. So we have started transitioning over and we're currently carrying their dark roast coffee and um, over the next couple months we'll be carrying the rest of their coffee. And so we wanted to make sure that we could support them during this trying time as well and offer, you know, it's really important to us that they have organic fair trade coffee. And so that not only can we support them, we can support farmers across the United States and overseas as well. Other questions? Don't all unmute at once. I have a question. So um, my question for you, and I feel this is the same for a lot of business owners, do you feel that during this time, I know you just started in December, so you know, you're trying to figure out what your normal is, but is there anything you've implemented that you think into your business model that you think will carry over um, you know, after you know, the COVID recovery, whenever that takes place? Um, yeah, I think the biggest thing that we've implemented and learned throughout this process is no matter what business you are, you have to use these trying times um, to build innovation and to really change and figure out what those customers need. If you're not getting the sales, how can you 
get the word out? How can you, you know, for us, it was partnering with other businesses and, and trying to come together. Um, we do have another coffee shop in St. Charles. And so I've been talking with Tanya, who owns that coffee shop. And how can we put on a united front instead of being two separate businesses? You know, we're all in the same community and how can we support one another? So you will frequently see me going through Tanya's drive through to get Denise and I a coffee, even though we own a coffee shop. And I think that's so important to make sure that you are not only supporting one another, but changing your business philosophy. And, you know, for us, there's a lot of people that are at home. And I know there's a lot of memes that are going around about, oh, I gained 10 pounds from COVID because everyone's, you know, eating comfort food and stuff. But that's kind of the trend that we've seen is that um, people are staying home. They're in the comfort of their home. So we need to make sure that we can do delivery, for example, to meet those needs if they don't feel comfortable going outside. Um, yeah, I would say, and that could apply to any business, um, but especially for us, it's, it's really weird because we don't know what that norm is. And so we've, we're evolving so quickly that like this morning, I think I had uh, 45 orders come through on my phone. I get a text and they're all for Saturday. And it's trying to keep up with that. And so now we're having to hire more people, which is great for our community. And we're able to provide more jobs too, so. All right. Um, the, of course, traditional last question that we ask is, and you, you brought a lot of it up in your presentation, but what can the community here in Rochester and the surrounding area do for you and your business? Honestly, um, I know that Dobby's just closed and I know that gingerbread is closed. And so there really isn't a place to get um, those homemade donuts or other uh, made from scratch pastries. So placing an online order and, um, you know, if it's once a month and when we come to Rochester, you know, if they could place an online order and support us that way or order a gift card for someone and we can mail that to that individual. Um, the sales are, I think, the most important thing, but also if you have any ideas for marketing, we would love to hear them. And since we do own our business and we don't have to worry about a higher up um, command, we can implement those changes as well. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Allie, for presenting today. And let's give her another fake uh, a round of applause. <laughs> thank it's you. Very genuine. It's from the heart. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, you. I was having a little bit of trouble with the poll um, and now I figured that out. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the poll. If you could just take a second uh, to answer the couple questions and we will get started uh, following that with our next presenter. So Tiffany, are you... Uh, are you ready to go? Yeah, I, I wanted to do my poll, make, make sure I did yeah, that. Yes, so so. thank you for complying with my uh, <laughs> rather uh, militaristic demands. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, let me get my PowerPoint shared here. All right. Well, you can't start yet until we give you oh. the always Sorry. exciting round of applause. So okay. <laughs> um, continue to answer. We're at about 60% participation right now um, on the poll. And I definitely want to welcome up our next presenter, uh, Tiffany uh, from Terra Loco, uh, who is going to tell us a lot about her business and uh, just give her that great virtual round of applause to get her going. Tiffany? Thank you. Um, thanks, guys, for inviting me today. I appreciate it. Um, I was going to spend a first couple of slides giving you a little bit more information about myself and how I got to become the owner of Terra Loco, but um, I think it's going to take up a little bit too much time and I know we want to focus on the, the COVID uh, response. So I'm actually just going to kind of skip past these first um, two slides, move on to the, the business kind of stuff. But um, if you have any questions about me or want to like, you know, um, schedule a networking meeting or something, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to um, share more about my 
myself and my background um, as well in the future. But we're gonna skip over this slide about me. We're gonna skip over my running story slide um, because I've not always been a runner, um, even though I do own a running store. And now um, let's talk about um, Terra Loco. So if you're not familiar with Terra Loco, we are an active lifestyle store that um, focuses on running. So we have footwear, um, apparel, gear, accessories, but um, we carry footwear and apparel and gear for people besides runners as well too. So walkers, hikers, um, uh, yoga stuff, all sorts of things. Um, I try to make it a very welcoming and inclusive environment so that nobody feels um, like they can't just walk into the store and find something for themselves. Um, I was thinking about this whole, uh, I watched some of the, the, uh, the presentations on, on putting together a presentation um, from, from One Million Cups and, and one of the, one of the um, important things was talking about, you know, kind of a comparison, right? So I was thinking about that, what, what would we be compared to? Um, I would say that if you haven't been in our store before, think about Terra Loco like a REI but for runners. So, you know, where REI maybe focuses more on camping, hiking, you know, that kind of thing, uh, climbing. Um, we get kind of similar selection of product, but more focused on runners. Um, so that is just a brief overview of what um, we carry. But to give you more information about, you know, kind of what things were like before um, COVID-19, um, you know, customer interaction and community building were probably the, the biggest part of our business and what made us most successful. So we always, um, that customer interaction, we always had a really hands-on in-store experience. We did uh, video gate analysis where we get people on the treadmill. We had a really generous return and exchange policy, make sure that people got in the right shoes so they could bring them back a couple of times, just make sure you had the right fit. Um, we also did a lot of events, so that's part of that community building. Um, we would do $5 5Ks every Monday at 6 p.m. where we would donate the proceeds to a different charity each week. We do pub runs, we did trail cleanups, we had uh, yoga in the store, we did a self-defense class, we had ladies night, which is a big event that was supposed to happen last week but now got rescheduled, and uh, we started doing some other fun things this year as well too, you can see up on the slide there um, that we did a uh, movie night at, um, um, <laughs> oh my gosh, brain. Um, the, uh, the, the, the little movie place in town here, um, that name is totally escaping me, sorry. Um, so that was something new that we did last year. Uh, we did a lot of charity events. We did a kids run club last year. And then we also started doing these um, Terra Local Travels things where we would bring people um, as a group to different running events. So up in that top left-hand corner, you can see um, one of our uh, teams at Ragnar Trail Wisconsin finishing. And we're hoping that we're gonna be able to do that again this year as well too. Um, and then we're also going to, again, hopefully um, to Disney in November um, for the Disney Princess Half Marathon. Um, of course, most of those things are very um, interactive and require you to be a lot closer than six feet. Um, so when this whole thing started, um, we, we, we closed for one day where I could just think about, okay, what are we going to do? Because so much of what we do is people coming into the store, getting fitted, getting that personal experience and then creating that community. And none of those things we could do anymore. So we had to be really creative about what we were gonna do. So one of the first things that we did was our quarantine challenge, which we are actually gonna do a couple more challenges as well. We've been doing these every summer, but we decided to um, kind of repackage that and make it a quarantine challenge. So that just finished up in May. Um, and so it's an event, um, virtual event basically, with a virtual um, Facebook group and, and encouragement to get just get people um, uh, getting out and, and being fit and, and just getting in 20 minutes of activity every single day. Um, and so that was a great, um, a really great uh, thing for us. We had 120 people register um, for the quarantine challenge. Um, the next thing that we did uh, was we came up with this idea of the mystery grab bag. So that has actually probably been our most um, most, most successful thing that we've done so far. Um, and what I really like about the grab bags is that it allows me to um, 
get rid of product that I want to get rid of, not necessarily that, you know, um, that uh, uh, people are coming in and choosing. So it kind of has allowed me to sort of get through some um, overstock of inventory that we had left over from um, fall and winter, as well as we got a whole bunch of new apparel and, and accessories in right before this whole thing started because spring season was starting. And so that's allowed us to um, move some of that product as well. And it's actually, it's been super successful. We sold, we've, we've sold a ton of them. Um, we also started doing virtual fittings. So we have now Zoom meetings where we can do this kind of thing um, where we're kind of face to face with a customer and uh, do that gate analysis when they're at home and they can do their gate analysis where we can watch and make that recommendation. Um, and those have also been really successful as well too. Um, we did not have an online store prior to this, um, mostly because our point of sale did not have an easy way to connect. And um, I think probably my biggest piece of advice for any entrepreneur, and I think um, Ali kind of mentioned this as well too, is like find those resources, reach out to people and get, you know, there's, there's help and there's advice out there. So I found this great way to get our um, inventory online super fast and super easy through another company that does this kind of thing. And the only reason I knew about it is because I network with another run specialty store in Virginia. And she was like, hey, I just found this really cool new thing. He gave me a deal. I asked for the same deal, got the same deal on the um, <laughs> online shopping for the next six months. And um, that just took off like wildfire, even though we haven't even actually announced that we have this option yet. So people are finding it and um, shopping online now. Um, the other thing we're doing, um, we've always done a lot of a lot of social media, but now it's like that is the most important thing because that's the way that people connect with us now. So lots and lots and lots of social media posting. Um, I also started doing um, a lot of Facebook Live videos, and so I kind of screen grabbed all of the <laughs> little videos that I did um, the last uh, several weeks. But this is a way for people to actually like see the product in motion and and you know kind of hear our advice and suggestions um, and maybe see you know apparel on body when they can't come into the store. And those have also been really successful. Um, we always get at least a handful of sales from each one of those Facebook Live videos that we do. So, you know, what are our biggest challenges right now? Um, obviously trying to fit and sell shoes and clothing virtually is difficult. Um, people can't come in and try things on. So we're really kind of struggling with that part of things. We're, you know, doing those workarounds with the uh, virtual fitting, but um, it's, you know, obviously not ideal. Uh, we also, of course, can't do any of those in-person events like we used to do, um, the group runs that we always had. And, you know, during the summer we would have at least two or three in-store events a week, sometimes five a week. And, you know, those were bringing in 50 to 100 and 150 people um, into the store every single week, which obviously isn't happening now as well. Um, I know this is the same for everybody, the uncertainty over reopening, trying to figure out what that's going to look like. How are we going to have social distance practices? How are we going to clean? What are we going to do with um, staff and everything? Uh, linking our online point of sale um, to, or linking our point of sale for to online sales was um, is is a challenge. I'm still um, working on on getting more of that product online because we don't have everything online right now. So we're doing this whole like, well, you can buy this online, but you have to call us for this, or you know, you have to message us for something else, which of course is not ideal for customers. And then of course, you know, just staffing, we did get approved for the uh, PPP. So we did get that funding and I was able to bring staff back. Um, but just figuring out like what the next couple of months are going to actually look like, how are we going to staff if we do reopen and we're doing by appointment, we have all these virtual fittings going on. I still need to do these things. I still need to do the uh, Facebook lives, all these other things. So just trying to figure out how we're going to um, move forward um, is probably one of my, um, one of my biggest challenges right now. And then finally, just to kind of summarize the things that were probably our most successful solutions to this um, uh, quarantine situation is the Facebook Lives, um, kind of creating this sort of in-person shopping experience without actually being in person. Um, the mystery grab bags, like I said, have been super popular. We just started doing uh, Mother's Day bags as well, too. And we sold, we've sold like 
30 or 35 of those already. And um, we just put them up on Thursday last week as well too. So that's been really um, a really good thing. Um, our virtual events, we've been doing Zoom meetings. Like later today, I have a, a 2.30 uh, meeting with um, Active PT where we're gonna be talking, everybody's invited to join that, where it's kind of a, a virtual, um, you know, uh, in-person, um, uh, education event, I guess, um, to, to talk to both us and to Active PT about how to find the right shoe. Um, the virtual fittings have been super successful. Almost every single one that we've done, we have sold a pair of shoes. Um, online shopping, also great, obviously. I, and, and this whole thing just forced me to um, make that online happen, um, which is something we've been talking about for probably like five years. <laughs> so it was nice to actually get it done. Um, and then of course, increased online communication. Um, I added a chat feature to our website. Um, we are doing a ton of communicating through Facebook Live, um, as well as, you know, Instagram Messenger and all these other different things. Of course, it's all coming from different, you know, different areas, which is hard to kind of track. So that's why we, you know, are really rely on our staff to make sure that everybody is getting an answer to their questions. So um, that is um, my presentation. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And um, yeah, I think that's all I had today. So, but I see a lot of, of, of chat things popping up. So I guess, uh, Jamie, you can facilitate that part. <laughs> All right. Yes, that is my role. Thank you so much. Round of applause. Awesome job. Uh, the first question is from uh, Marty Lando Calarizian Walsh, uh, currently located in Bespin. Hey, Tiffany. So you kind of got to this after I said I was going to have a question. It sounds like you were planning to do more online sales anyway, or you were hoping to do more online sales. So I'm assuming that this has, you know, is this something you're going to keep up and keep on doing? Um, so I'll kind of modify that. If there's anything that once you can get more physical traffic, if you'll combine that with online sales anyway, if there's something like you're waiting to do. But then also I was wondering if you're getting much support from your vendors um, for online promotions and things. So from the shoe manufacturers or things like that uh, to support you in your efforts. Yeah, actually that's, um, that's a good question. Um, yeah, our vendors have been awesome. I mean, as soon as, you know, things just, as soon as those stay at home orders started coming, coming down, um, almost every single one of our vendors reached out and said, we're going to give you extended dating or, you know, don't worry if you need to get the, you know, these orders need to be canceled. Um, or, you know, you're gonna get an additional discount on whatever. So yeah, I mean, it's been, um, yeah, the, our vendors have been, been really great. Um, now, of course, you know, it's the extended dating doesn't really help because, uh, now that I have a big bill, you know, that might be coming due in, you know, a couple months. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it helps us get by, of course, um, for, for now. So, yeah. All right, great. Uh, Allie had a question. Um, yeah, I have actually been in the market for new shoes. So I'm wondering how we can connect with you personally and get a full consultation set up. Yeah, so the best way right now is going to be doing the virtual fitting. Um, if if you don't know what shoe you what shoe you need, um, and then that, like I said, allows me to um, you know talk to you about your particular needs. We can do that gait analysis, and then I actually like physically take my iPad around the store and I show you, okay, here's the shoe, and you know I have it with colors and, and whatnot. Um, so that would be the best way to, um, to to get into a new pair of shoes. Unless you already know what you want, and then you can just message us, and then um, if we have it, you can do curbside pickup um, today. To just go through the business Facebook page? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, Ken has a question. Yeah, not so much a question, but I do uh, a lot of work with the nonprofits in town after many years, and your name is on all of them, and you're a sponsor on all of them. So just in case no one has ever told you to your face, thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thanks, Ken. Other questions or great comments? Oh, Chris, look at Bill. All right, yeah, so you mentioned a couple of things there as far as what you're gonna be bringing, maybe bringing forward into the future. Um, 
could you expand on any of those as far as what do you think what do you think will be the things that you can continue to move forward i know that um some of the things like the grab bags you said really have gone over well um and i've seen that's really a, a good option for people to be able to find new things even and integrate in with a new business model what types of things do you think will move forward that that'll work well to kind of follow on amanda's questions from last round yeah so before this started we actually had already we were talking about doing um appointments so where somebody could you know just make an appointment specifically with me and you know spend um an hour kind of in depth you know um some people just need a little bit more help than others or you know some people wanted to actually like spend that time with me so we were already kind of talking about that sort of a by appointment model um and so that's definitely something that will continue and i have a feeling that we may continue the virtual fittings as well um maybe to a lesser degree but maybe that's kind of like a pre pre appointment type deal you know virtually we can chit chat about your needs and then you can come into the store or something along those lines um well we'll definitely will continue the the mystery grab bags um for sure um and um obviously the online sales um, once i get everything kind of integrated uh, that'll be a huge uh, a huge thing as well too um and i definitely see that the i mean i already knew this kind of going into it but that the social media was a huge part of of our kind of community and um a, a really great way to just let people know about product and and things we had going on in the store and and in, in the past you know we we'd make a post about something and i'd always sell one or two things you know as a result of that post um now that people are kind of uh sitting at home um and and on facebook and instagram a lot we're just doing tons more of that kind of thing and that's just something we're just going to have to make sure we push those facebook live videos have actually been really successful as well too um i think in some ways just being able to have that communication with our customers and have them feel like, you know, they're in the room with me um, or, you know, being able to have that like personal conversation. So those will probably definitely continue as well too. All right, any other questions? I always feel like as soon as I start talking, someone will jump in. All right, uh, hearing none, again, asking that big question. And again, you, you, you highlighted, I think, this really, really well, but what can the community do here in Rochester to help you move your business forward? Um, yeah, so the, if you need shoes, um, like uh, Ali asked, um, virtual fitting or online, of course, you know, sales are always, you know, great. Um, but beyond that, I would say just um, liking, sharing or post, um, letting people know that we're here. I, I still run into some people who, you know, think of us exclusively as like a running store. So they're like, well, I'm not a runner, so I can't shop there. Um, you know, and so like, if you do hear somebody, you know, complaining about, you know, knee pain, or they just started running and they're, you know, having trouble with their shoes or, you know, whatever the, ha oh, the case may be, um, send them, send them our way and um, let them know that we're here and we are still open and um, able to, to fulfill orders and, and get them into the right shoes. Great, thank you so much. Uh, round of yep. applause for Tiffany, great job. Yeah, so that'll do it uh, for this One Million Cups. Thanks to Allie and to Tiffany for sharing their business stories with us. Um, we will see you next month on June 3rd, which will be the first Wednesday of the month. Uh, I can't make any guarantees if we'll be in person or not, but you know, this is a format we're working on. And quite honestly, um, as we move forward, with the work I do at Collider, but also what we do with One Million Cups, I think having a virtual presence is going to be very, very important no matter what. So definitely this is a medium, a new medium that we will use uh, for most of our live events, I believe, going forward. In addition to, you know, we, we're really praying that, you know, one day I can, I can get closer than six feet from you and, and, and get you all together in a great, in a great event. So, um, Again, thanks to our speakers. Thanks to all of you for taking time out of your day to join us. And we will see you on June 3rd. Stay safe, everyone, and take care.